Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Bratislava in Slovakia for round two of the 2019 ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. It's finals time and first up it'll be the men's C1 finals. Then immediately afterwards we'll have the women's kayak finals. As we get into this Olympic qualification year, the 2019 season really building up. Myself, Adi Maduk, and then alongside me, Sona Stanowska of the Slovak team, who will be competing in tomorrow's Women's C1 semi-finals here on this great venue on the River Danube, just around 20 kilometers south of Bratislava. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure that I can be here with you and um, see what uh, the finals will bring. In uh, C1 men's, we have three out of three boats from Slovakia. So hopefully at least one can have a medal here. So big expectations for the home crowd from Slovakia on this great venue. Well, the course design is 23 gates and the course designers, Maritzel Rodriguez and Pierpaolo Ferrazzi have set a challenging course for people to follow. 23 gates, six red and white upstream gates. The rest are green and white downstream gates. The green and white gates need to be negotiated in the downstream gate direction. The red and white gates in an upstream direction. So 215 athletes from 30 plus countries are racing here in Bratislava and Slovakia. And here's the standing after race one in the men's canoe singles. So a couple of those athletes, in fact, the uh, medalists from last weekend, not racing here, but we've got some big names nonetheless. Here's the start order. They're racing in reverse order of the semi-final performance. So the fastest was uh, Gregor Hedvig of Poland. He goes off last in this 10-boat final. Three minute intervals. And well, here's a bit of uh, an indication of some of the uh, areas to watch. Then gate 17 certainly produced some uh, challenges a few 50-second uh, penalties in the semi-finals and uh, well penalties particularly gate five at the top part of the course gate 17 and the bottom part of the course but we're underway with racing and our first competitor from the russian federation it's nikolai skliaryuk uh, who gets the opportunity to set the pace and well, not a lot known about this new competitor to the team, other than he can be very fast. He qualified through in seventh place from the heats, so uh, made it through in tenth place in that semi final. And the opportunity to set the pace here. Yeah, he's also the one uh, of the paddlers which didn't make the team A, but uh, this this year it's Olympic selection. So uh, so from many countries, the, all the athletes won the every race, as we see, for example, in Russia or uh, in Great Britain. So that's why he is here. But we see that he is also good paddler. That he is in final. Well, it looks like a two-second penalty picked up on the downstream gate. 12 so two seconds of penalties picked up if you hit the gate with any part of your body your boat or your paddle and a 50 second penalty if you miss the gate or you incorrectly negotiate the gate but uh, nikolai setting the pace here but having to go around it looks like he's missed gate 18 and that'll be a real big penalty on the clock yeah he miss he's paddling again this gate and he missed so much time there so uh, he won't be happy with this run so last weekend in this event, it was Sideris Tassiadis of Germany, the world number one, who reaffirmed that status, taking the gold medal ahead of Adam Burgess of Great Britain and Ryan Wesley of Great Britain in third place. Nine of the, none of those are racing. They're focusing on, uh, I guess, key performance around that Olympic, Olympic qualification preparation. But uh, Nikolai comes into the finish and sets the time, 117.59, and uh, disappointing for him as uh, an indication, the fastest raw time from the semi-final, 94.75 seconds. So there we see a penalty on gate 12, and just see the run of the boat. This white water here, Sona, you paddle this on a regular basis. The power of this white water shouldn't be underestimated. How do you uh, deliver a fast run on this course? 
you really need to control your boat and um, put your pedal in the uh, in the right position as you should. And also the speed of your boat uh, should be all the time as, as fast as possible. And then uh, that's the key how to have a good run here. Well, let's see, because we've still got nine boats to go in this, the final of the men's C1 here at the second World Cup of the five race season. And it is one of three Slovaks in this final, and it's Matej Berus, where in bib number four, cutting the lines fine already in this competition. He was the Olympic silver medalist in Rio 2016. And uh, in fact, a bronze medalist at the World Championships in 2011 on this course. Yeah, after Rio, uh, he, um, his coach became the chief of our police spawn center. So he had to find a new coach. And right now he is working with uh, gold Olympic medalist uh, Škantar. So uh, that's his coach for uh, this season. And I think that they are really friends and it works well with him. Well, Mate looks like he's putting a good run together. And you can hear the crowd supporting him down from the grandstand. As uh, he looks very smooth, very composed on this difficult 23-gate course. So you say he's uh, very friendly, very supportive to other members of the team. So now look at that, five seconds up on our current race lead time. Remember the overall time we're looking for is probably around about 94 seconds to be in with a shout at taking the gold medal here. Yeah, this is his home course, so he knows every wave uh, perfectly and uh, hopefully he will have a clean, uh, clean run till now he has, so... Well, he's looking very smooth. He's going to be clean through the last gate. He is going to take the race lead for sure. 96.32. Matej Benos of Slovakia puts the marker down for everybody else to follow. Well, he's left the door a little bit open there, but it is a great run from Benos under pressure. Yeah, it's still not the best time, as we saw from in the semi, but it's challenging to the others. Well, exactly. We saw a little bit last weekend in the first World Cup race of the season how uh, some people got the pacing wrong for the final and uh, got big, big penalties and, and blew out. So it is a balance about how much risk you take to get onto that podium. Benos leads for Slovakia with eight boats still to go. Ready to go now with our next competitor from the Czech Republic. And uh, just one Czech representative in this 10 boat final. And it is Wojciech Heger, who's very capable of putting the marker down and uh, was very quick down in the semi final. Quite new to the senior circuit, ranked just uh, 100 in the world in the ICF world rankings but very much uh, capable of getting into the mix. And already 2.2 up on Benos of Slovakia. Yeah, he's the youngest one, Perlo here. But now we saw the touch, but um, it can be still enough to be maybe second or still the first if he will still have the speed to the end of his run. And he's also one of them which which are switching pedal and it's it's uh, not many pedalers do it in, uh, in C1 men. So, yeah, that's look. So instead of staying on the same side each time, holding the paddle in the same hand and then doing the cross bow, when he wants to set it up, then uh, he will change hands. And actually, despite losing some time, he is still in touch with uh, Benos, our race leader. But Benos was so good on this bottom section. This is going to be critical. And, well, Heger of the Czech Republic has uh, waved his head at that. The judges will be looking at that. He's certainly gone back round to 
uh, make sure that uh, he doesn't get a 50 second penalty and this is where Benesch's performance was so strong and surely Benesch will hold on to the race lead here. Before the last upstream, it's there is rock um, into the water, which we can't see, so uh, it's it's quite risky to have a paddle in the water. It's better to put your paddle up. Well, a 50-second penalty given to the downstream gate 18. So uh, into third place for Wojciech Heger of the Czech Republic. Here is where Wojciech's problem started that penalty just at the front end of the boat on the downstream gate 10 such are the tight margins and then here on that upstream gate 21 on niagara as it's called you can see the scale of that drop and the speed of the boat as you come into that upstream precision is vital and they're just well on his first attempt not quite sure whether he got his whole head in but he wisely went round again Next paddler should be again from Slovakia, Michal Martikan. He's the uh, well, his history it's it's brilliant. He got so much, so many medals from from Olympics and uh, from World Championships. So, so he's a legend in the sport of canoe slalom. He's a bit of a legend in this in the country in Slovakia, winning Slovakia's first ever Olympic medal back in 1996. Four times a world champion, five times winning an Olympic medal. Mikhail Martikan, 40 years of age, still able to perform under pressure, making it through into this final. Yeah, he's still legend with his Red Bull because um, it's like his signature. Yes, he's had that throughout his career from way back um, in junior days. Uh, so, well, he's taken a penalty on the top part of the course. That's one of those uh, vintage moves from Mikhail Martikan, how he flings the boat round with such confidence. Yeah, Benjus had a clean run, and I think that that's really good. And now he again touched next gate, so... So he's really on the pace, but those two touches, four seconds of penalties now, putting him on his back foot as he comes into the upstream 14. Now, this is where he's very good on the downstream gates, making a straight line. Let's see what he can do as he comes. And look at that, his time is quick. He's yeah. two seconds down on Benush, but it looks like he's picked up another penalty. And yes, confirmed on the downstream 18. Yeah, sometimes when the athletes push too much, then they make uh, mistakes like a touching gate or uh, uh, or just um, come to the upstream before the upstream, jump before the gate. Well, it's going to be a quick time for Mikhail Martikan, but it's not going to take the race lead today. It, that belongs to Matej Benush of Slovakia, but at the moment into second place for Mikhail Martikan of Slovakia. It's Slovakia 1, Slovakia 2, the Russian Federation in 3 as we get, well, there's still six boats to go in this final and then the fastest boat from the semi-final. So what do you think Mikhail will be thinking there? I think that he knows that three touches is too much. Maybe with one touch he can think about the medal, but three touches is too much and he won't be happy with this run. Yeah, what a story that would have been for Mikhail Martikan to get on the podium in front of his home crowd here in Bratislava. Not sure that's going to be, but Matej Benush is well placed to be on the podium with yeah, six boats to go. Yes, hopefully at least Matej or maybe Alexander will come to podium, but I don't think that for Matikan it will be enough. So Alexander Slavkovsky, of course, still to go for Slovakia. But let's turn our attention to our next finalist, because he is the reigning world champion from 2018. For Germany, it is the 29-year-old Franz Anton. And uh, well, in the semi-finals, uh, he qualified through into the final with a pretty average run on his, uh, by his standards. And if he can find the groove, particularly on this top section, we'd anticipate him to challenge the race lead. Yeah, he used to do C2, but now he changed for a C1 because C2 become a non-Olympic uh, uh, non um, category. But he's super good in C1. He's world, championship, uh, world champion from last year. 
So um, I think that he is able to get a medal. Well, and look at that. Two seconds up on the early split. Franz Anton of Germany is looking good. He was eighth last weekend in uh, the first of the World Cup races at London in Lee Valley. And he'll be looking to, uh, well, improve on that, get on the podium. And he's really looking sharp here as he comes into 13. Yeah, his run is without any mistake. I think that he's so smooth and he pushed uh, her, his boat so much. So I think that his run can be really fast. Well, let's watch him. This is where there were penalties. And look, two and a half seconds, he is up. This is where Mikhail Martikan had problems. It doesn't look like there's any problems for Franz Anton. So it's just this double upstream on Niagara that precision is so important. And he's oh, low. This was co cost him maybe a medal because otherwise his run was so, so good. Well, he's nailed date 22. Has he made up some time? Franz Anton of Germany surely is going to challenge the race lead here as he comes to the finish. It's going to take the race lead and whoa, into the race lead. But how he had that margin cut, 0 0.30, his advantage. And there you can see the uh, Thomas Apple, the German coach, watching his every move. But Franz Anton of Germany takes the race lead ahead of Matej Benos of Slovakia. Mikhail Martikan of Slovakia holding on to third place at this, the halfway point in this 10 boat final. And Franz Anton just looks so composed on the water. He, yes, he looks so um, confused. But um, in Niagara, you never know what happened. And it's really hard to jump to the left side with a, with a pedaler on the right side. So Yeah, so that's, it'd be interesting to see whether he uh, ever considered switching to do that move. Um, but anyway, he is our race leader at the halfway stage in the final. And here we are, these are the results at this stage. 96.02 the race lead time, but we know people managed to go quicker than that in the semi-final. So uh, the door is open, but it is about delivery when it counts. So the crowd eagerly anticipating. So two Slovak paddlers in medal positions at this stage and still one Slovak boat to go in this, the uh, final of the men's C1 competition. But it is Germany's Franz Anton leading the way. Halfway stage, world champion Franz Anton is leading, even though you, you look like I made a big mistake near the end there, Franz, but you're still leading. Oh, I had multiple chances to, to be better as in my semi-final run, because uh, it was not the best. But uh, yeah, this time the first part of the race was good, and the last part, last part was not so good like in my semi-final, but leading, so still okay, I think. What do you think of that time? Is that a competitive time, do you think? There's five more paddlers to go. What do you think? Uh, maybe place three or four, I would say. I would say 93, 94 is possible. And I have 96, so there's still a chance to, to beat me. Keep your fingers crossed. Well done, friends. Thanks. Thank you. Well, there was our race leader, Franz Anton, talking to Ross Solly there. And, uh, well, he doesn't think he's done enough for the top spot. And we certainly were commenting there that we think it's definitely out there a time quicker than 96.02, but he's got it in the bank. The others have still got to deliver. Yeah, his, his stop was so good, as he said, but the um, last two upstreams, it's, it's hard, and he didn't make it as he planned it. Well, next up for the United States of America, it is Casey Eichfeldt. So Casey Eichfeldt, he was uh, fourth at the 2015 World Championships. That's his best career result uh, to date. He also is a, uh, an Olympian from London and from Rio. And he was seventh at the Rio Olympics. So he's now, this will be his eighth World Cup final. So no stranger to 
performing in this the uh, single run high performance high pressure kind of run and well 1.74 down from that top section but uh, we know that there is time in the bottom part of the course from Franz Anton's run yeah he was a little bit low but Anton uh, he had such a good top section so maybe if we, he will manage to last jump he can still think about the medal position uh, Casey Eiffel does seem to have a good run on the boat. He looks like he's really feeling the water well, working in harmony with the water as he comes through the split, and he has slightly reduced the deficit now as he comes through gate 19 and 20. Now, this is the critical section now over Niagara. He's got to deliver this upstream left. Yeah, but he's pedaling on the same side as, uh, as Anton Franz, and now we see that he also had a problem there. Oh, you're right. Really good observation there, Sona. And, uh, yeah, big time loss there. No penalties added, but uh, big time loss there. Tidy on 22. But, look, he's going to be outside of that race lead time. The question is, where is he going to slot into the leaderboard? Because he's gone into third place. So he goes in between Matej Benos in second place for Slovakia and Mikhail Martikan of Slovakia now pushed down to fourth place. So Casey Eichfeld, a solid run, but again, that bottom move, that double upstream gate, making all the difference in the final run. So Casey Eichfeld, you can see ducky under 10 to set up this move through 11 into 12. And uh, really working well throughout the run, but struggling into the upstream 21. That was the make or break move for him in this, the men's C1 final. So, with four boats still to go in this, the men's C1 final. Franz Anton leads for Germany ahead of Matej Benush of Slovakia. Casey Eichfeldt for the United States of America in third place. Next to go, it is the 2017 world champion from Slovenia, Benjamin Savcek. And, well, Benjamin was 10th at Lee Valley last weekend. Disappointing run in the final and looking to make up and certainly a very consistent paddler who you'd expect to deliver something special today i think that uh well he's one of the my favorite paddlers and uh, he can make it to the to the paid podium as we see also his time is nearly uh half second up so he has uh, done what's required on the top section half a second the advantage now he's got to deliver the bottom, the middle section, wow. and that's, he's taken the move on forwards and made that look so easy. Yeah, it was so, so fast. So Benjamin Savcek now coming into the upstream gate 14, and in a few gates' time we'll get an indication of uh, just how close he is to our current race leader. And he is up, and he's extended the advantage. Now 1.32 seconds up. But you can just see how the back of his boat, it's not very deep there, is it? He's dragging the back of his boat and he's been given a 50 second penalty on gate 18. This was also the risky, the last, uh, second last up. But I didn't see 50 on gate number 18. Yeah, it's interesting. So the judges will be uh, looking at each of the gates is videoed and it's all gone a bit scrappy on the bottom section. It's still a quick time though from Savsek of Slovenia and the runtime, I'm just trying to work out the runtime there. Well, 93.74 is actually good enough to take the race lead. But that 50 second penalty, here it is, gate 18. Well, the bottom of the boat, the back of the boat hits the bottom, and it yeah. does look like he um, certainly left it to the judges to make that decision. There is low water, so if you put your um, your end of your boat too much under the water then you hit the bottom and that's maybe why he got a 50. Well that was the fastest raw time of the day so far so that was 93.74 race lead time still held by Franz Anton of Germany 96.02 
ahead of Matej Benos of Slovakia, Casey Eichfeldt of the United States of America. But still, three boats to go in this, the men's C1. It's, it's finals time. Ten boats racing it out for the medals here. The first of our medals competition. And uh, actually, Ben Savsek has just been given a 50-second penalty on the upstream 21. So no doubt that he's not a contender for the podium today. But he is a contender for the podium today. Uh, the final of three Slovak paddlers in this 10-boat final. Alexander Slavkovsky, who is uh, on the run and on the charge. Well, he was the fastest out of the heats. He went off last in this morning's semi-final. And his opportunity to uh, make the home crowd proud as he comes through the top section. Oh, he, he lost so much time there. But, and he touched it. Well, yes, it looks like it was good recovery there. The water was just not working for him on that top section. Well, let's see how much time he has lost. Six seconds on the top section. That's huge. Alexander Slavkovsky needs something special now in front of the grandstand, in front of the home crowd. Well, he's taken on the move. It's, it's quick. It's a quick spin. And uh, he's going to be tight into the upstream gate 13. Yeah, he can be really fast, but uh, his top wasn't as he planned it. Wow. But there is still uh, last two upstreams where the first two, um, uh, Anton Franz and Matej Benjuž, uh, had a little bit of problem. So if he will manage it, maybe he can still think about the podium. But he now he hit the bottom again. Well, let's have a look. Alexander Slavkovsky now coming to the double upstream gate 21 and 22 again on his crossbower side. So same sort of problem as we saw for Eichfeldt and for Anton. But uh, Alexander Slavkovsky, he looks like he's put in a useful run, but it's not going to take the lead here. Whether he can take a podium place, I'm not sure. He's going to be outside of a place on the podium into fourth place for Alexander Slavkovsky of Slovakia. So with two boats to go in this men's C1 final here in Bratislava in Slovakia, it's Franz Anton leading for Germany, 96.02. Matej Benos of Slovakia, just 0.3 of a second behind. And Casey Eichfeldt of the United States of America, currently holding on to third place. So, Alexander put in a good run there, but it just, he couldn't find, he couldn't make up for what happened at the top of the course. Yes, but till now we didn't see any perfect run. Each of the run had some little mistakes. So let's see if Bosic or Hedwig can make it without, without any problem. Yeah, and it just reminds us really the difficulty of this white water course here in Bratislava, you just take the gates away and it's not actually that straightforward to paddle down the course fast, such as the power of the white water. 6.6 .6 meters it drops from start to finish and, uh, well, the power of the uh, water is significant. Penultimate boat to go in this men's C1 final. It is Luka Bozic of Slovenia. And Luka Bozic, well, he was fourth last weekend at the Lee Valley World Cup, so he's got his season off to a great start. And particularly as we get into the Olympic selection kind of climate in each of the teams where there's competition for just one place in a, a country's team, he'll be looking to put a marker down. And, it, well, he recovered that very well, but look, 2.6 seconds down as he really had to fight to get into the upstream gate six. Yeah, he lost quite a lot of seconds there, but uh, he still make it. But as I said, if he jumped the last drop, he can still be maybe second or third, because Anton uh, Franz, he lost a lot of time. Yeah, so Bozic is a left-handed paddler, so in theory, coming into the upstream gate 21, as you say, so that he should be better place to get in tight and outside of that upstream that caused problems to our race leader. 3.32 seconds down. He can't afford to let that open up anymore. And he's good through this uh, downstream sequence of gates. But this is the critical move on his onside into 21. 
yeah, we see that for the left um, Whoa, left pedaler, it's it's much easier, and he manages really good. But from the last up to the finish, it's around 10 seconds, so he will be. Well, it's going to be tight as middle. he comes to the finish. He's outside the race time, but into third place for Bozic of Slovenia, 97.32. And well, as you said, Sona, he. Uh, really managed to use that uh, left-handed move into the upstream 21 he managed to cut the deficit down and into third place but Franz Anton still leading for Germany with one boat to go Matej Benos of Slovakia is second Luka Bozic of Slovenia is third so Slovakia guaranteed a medal it's just what color it's yeah, going to be yeah that's such a good news and uh, as I said, uh, my best friend is Matej, uh, Matej Benjuš from these three peddlers. And this is his home uh, course, so for him it's really good news. Well, yes, I know a popular athlete on the circuit, Matej Benjuš, as is Luka Bozic, who we are watching here for Slovenia. And of course, we'll be in Slovenia next weekend for the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup 3 on uh, Tartsen, just on the outskirts of Ljubljana, and you can join that again through Planet Canoe, so uh, make sure you get that in your diary for next weekend. But here, the final competitor in this men's C1 final. It's the fastest boat from the semi-finals. It's Gregor Hedvig of Poland, the 30-year-old who's had an outstanding start to his 2019 season. Yeah, he's also pedaling on the left side, so to Niagara uh, is the better side. But now he had big problem on game number five. He touched it, and, and now again, one more touch. Uh, so Just shows how quickly it can go wrong, the, uh, the section under the bridge. How consistent is the water on that section? Uh, well, under the bridge, there is one roll, which is always another and uh, each athlete need to look at the water how big it is if it's open or not but uh, it's it's quite easy to use it to the next gate but then uh, the turning to the again next gate it's it's quite hard to stop your boat and the can push it to um, uh, to gate number um, 17 well, Gregor Hedvig of Poland looks like, yes, he's on the disadvantage, four seconds, but his pace is good, look at that. So, uh, but he's just picked up another penalty on the downstream gate 18. So Gregor Hedvig of Poland looks like he's not going to challenge, certainly for the gold medal. And uh, it looks like the medalists at the moment are going to stay the same. At the moment, Anton of Germany leading ahead of Benus of Slovakia and Bozic of Slovenia as another penalty on the sprint finish means Gregor Hedvig of Poland finishes down in seventh place. Well, Poland disappointed there and uh, an opportunity missed, but uh, here we see it. Penalties early on in the course and he never really recovered from that. Yeah, but Anton Franz, he can be really, really happy because he's the fastest, even with one really big mistake. And also, it's good that Benjuš have a medal. And uh, Luka Bozic, he was uh, also good in uh, in last race, so maybe in overall it will get uh, really good points from the third place. Well, Gregor Hedvig given a 50-second penalty on the downstream gate five that moves him down the order. But there are our medalists in this the second world cup of the 2019 season and well it looks like gregor had been given it for deliberately moving the gate difficult decision there but our medalists from the men's c1 event franz anton of germany the world champion of 2018 takes gold well, here friends, in bratislava you, you thought that wouldn't be a quick enough time but it turns out it was plenty quick enough I'm really happy with it, yeah, because 96, I was expecting something around 94, but great. <laughs> it's obviously a really tough course, and we've seen a lot of athletes come unstuck. What was the key today, do you think? How do you sort of keep on top of it all? 
Uh, the course was designed by Zorn and he was my former coach, so maybe I know him a little bit better than the others. <laughs> I don't know what the secret was. It was just like uh, going clean and fast and that's like always the race. So just just keep pushing and you will be fastest and good. And nice for you to get back on top of the podium again. After the disappointing race in, in London, yeah, of course. Uh, unfortunately, it's not an Olympic race for Germany, but uh, still happy with it. And it gives me good feelings for the next World Cup in Leipzig, or for my next World Cup in Leipzig. Congratulations, Franz. Well done. You're well, there's a very happy Franz Anton of Germany who takes gold here in Bratislava, ahead of Slovakia's Matej Benos, who takes the silver and Luka Bozic of Slovenia who takes the bronze medal. So your reflections there from that competition, Sona? Well, uh, before the race, I would say that uh, Saushek was one uh, one for me which could get the medal, then that, but then uh, also Benjoš because this is his home course and also Fran Franz Anton. Well, it's Anton that will take the early lead in the Canoe Slalom World Cup after two races. And well, up next, we will be on with the women's kayak final. the standings after two races. It's actually Matej Bedos who gets slightly ahead of Franz Anton in the standings. Luka Bozic, so the top three from today, still featuring in those top three standings. Best of five races, and of course, the fifth race is the final and double points. But now, our focus here in Bratislava for World Cup 2 is on the women's kayak final. And we'll be in action again. The top 10 boats from this morning's semi-final will be racing it off. Here are the standings after one very much in the mix in this final. So uh, I'm sure this will start to shape the World Cup standings. Race Mallory Franklin, of course, for Great Britain, winning last weekend, but uh, not competing here. But Ricarda Funk and Jessica Fox, as well as Mylan Chiro very much in the mix in this final so uh, I'm sure this will start to shape the World Cup standings as we go through the season five races over the course of the 2019 season in this World Cup series and the uh, winner of the World Cup will be crowned in the World Cup final which is in Prague in the uh, early part of September so here is the start list for the women's kayak final and Australia's Jessica Fox the world champion also we've got the Olympic champion medalist Luca Jones for New Zealand and of course Germany's super consistent Ricarda Funk myself champion Mylan Shuru of Spain also we've got Karina Kuhnler world champion here back in 2011 for Austria. We've got the Olympic silver medalist Luca Jones for New Zealand and of course Germany's super consistent Ricarda Funk. Myself Andy Maddock alongside me Sona Stanowski of the Slovak team 
Who do you fancy to uh, put one down in this final? I think that Ricarda, he's, um, he is the one which can have a medal and also my Allen shootout and maybe Jessica. So those are the top three that uh, we're thinking at the moment. Well, they're certainly uh, consistent top-level performers. And talking of consistent top-level performers, well, she is the most successful paddler in canoe slalom history at world championship level. She's only 25 years of age. For Australia, she's on course. Jessica Fox gets the opportunity to set the pace here in this final. Well, she sneaked into the semi-final, sorry, into this final. In the semi-final, she was, uh, well, had a big mistake on the bottom section, just managed to make it in. So uh, as an indication, Ricarda Funk of Germany, who goes off last in this final, was the only paddler to go. It's really interesting that number one is going as the first one, so she finished 10th as, as the last position, and number two... 100 seconds. So if she wants to take gold, it needs to be under 100 seconds for Jessica Fox. It's really interesting that number one is going as the first one, so she finished 10th as, as the last position, and number two is going as the last one, so the two paddlers will start and we will finish with them. Yeah, so we'd anticipate Ricarda Funk will be watching this run very closely uh, as she makes her final preparations for her performance in, in around about 25 minutes' time. But uh, Jessica Fox now, this is where she had problems on the semi-final run. No problems there on this, her final run. Now, two more upstreams to go. The red and white gates, this is where it's critical. Well, it's pretty tidy from Jessica. It's not the fastest, but importantly, it's clean. Yeah, her run looks that she doesn't have any big mistakes, so, and, and she's... Fine on the last gate, 102.98. It's a clean run for Jessica Fox, but she knows that uh, that time on... We will just... see how she can do the last gate. Oh, oh wow. What a recovery for Jessica <laughs> Fox there. Pushed offline on the last gate, 102.98. It's a clean run for Jessica Fox. But she knows that uh, that time under 100 seconds is achievable. So we'll have to wait and see how that comes off. Well, Jessica Fox was on the podium last weekend in London. She was third in the first race of the World Cup season. And, well, she'll be looking to get on the podium. It's certainly a good run. Will it be good enough for the podium? She's going to have to wait and see over the course of the next 25 minutes. Yeah, her, her run wasn't bad, but she knows that Ricarda is also fast and under 100 seconds it's possible to do it. Look how tight she gets around those poles. Look at that concentration here on the big white water here on the uh, River Danube. Just uh, channeled off the River Danube, this white water course here in Bratislava, Slovakia. So next up, it is Eva Tursel of Slovenia wearing bib number eight. Very much... Uh, capable of getting in the mix has been on the circuit for a long long time and of course we'll be in Slovenia next weekend for the third of the ICF World Cup series and great little line there four five and six yeah she was pretty smooth she didn't um, she used the wave and it pushed her the way she wanted but she had a touch on gate number six on the upstream gate so Eva was seventh last weekend, so she made the final last weekend in the first World Cup of the season in London. And uh, looking to build on that. Well, she's already in the final. This is about looking at how many points she can score in the World Cup standing. 60 points up for grabs for a win in the World Cup. And, well, although that two-second penalty is showing, it's looking like she has uh, really refocused well and has got the run of the boat. Yeah, in C1 men, I think the top six peddlers had a clean run, so with the touch it's always hard, and now she got another one, a little bit of troubles here. Yeah, she's late, isn't she? She's late from 18, she recovers it well, but that will cost her a few tenths on the clock. 
And it looks like Jessica Fox of Australia is going to maintain her advantage, and definitely so, as you could just see the power of the water here on Niagara. Yeah, there is big roll, and you just have to jump, jump it, and then you are in the gate. But you never know what will happen there. So it's a good little move on the upstream gate 22 for Eva Tursell, and uh, certainly paddling well. But you can see just how much time it cost her on the upstream gate 21, and drops 10 and a half seconds on our race leader for Australia. So it's Jessica Fox leads for Australia. 102.98 ahead of Ava Tursell of Slovenia. Look at that the slightest touch on gate 10 with the bow of her boat. Great camera angle there. And perfect racing conditions really today. So no, not too hot. It's about 25 degrees, isn't it? No wind. Uh, what would your ideal racing conditions be? I think that's the best because when it's too hot, the athletes get uh, tired really quickly. And when it's too cold, it's quite hard to stay warm because the water is, is always cold. So this is like the best temperature to have on the race. So this time last week, we were in London and it was rather chilly and wet. But uh, and, and in fact, this time last weekend, I think in uh, Bratislava, it was like 35 degrees. And now perfect conditions for our racing today. But it's Veronika Wojcova of the Czech Republic who will be next to start. Again, no stranger to a World Cup final, but actually the only Czech representative in this 10-boat final. We saw Katarina Kutayova, uh, who is world champion from 2015, not make it through in the semi-finals. So this is the first real test through gate four and five, using the white water, working on that. And it looks like Veronica has done a really tidy job of the top section. That, that upstream in gate six, the, the water is really swirling and boiling around. Uh, how do you deal with that? Well, sometimes uh, the gate a uh, little bit uh, uh, move, but it's just water. So um, also it's quite hard for the judges to say if, if it was water or, um, or we touch it. Well, each of the gates is obviously judged by a qualified gate judge, but also we have video judging. So even during the run, there will be a team of video judges reviewing the penalties to make sure a fair competition has taken place. There's Veronica Wojcova. Well, she was up on the early split only by a little bit over Jessica Fox of Australia. Now we'll get an indication. She's down, but she's still in touch. 1.21 as she just has to uh, change the plan a little bit, but not a big drama there. Yeah, she didn't want to miss the gate, so she started to pedal backward. But this ups was, I think, better like the just made it. So she quite, um, so she managed it, but this up, it's not as she planned Oh, look at this. So Veronika Wojcova, the Czech Republic, just getting caught on the eddy line where the, where the fast water and the steady slack water meet. And that's cost her a huge amount of time. So outside of that and into second place, but you can see over three seconds lost on that bottom section. So still Jessica Fox leading for Australia ahead of Veronika Wojcova of the Czech Republic, Eva Tursel of Slovenia in third place. So a lot of time trading hands on the bottom section of the course. But uh, the top section, that's where we've seen a lot of fiddly little penalties that uh, have put people on the back foot before they've even got to gate seven. Yeah, Czech have a really strong team, so that means that if you are in team, in Czech, in Czech team, you can think about the finals, that you know that you are fast enough. Well, and Sona, you'll be racing in the uh, C1 event tomorrow. So how are you going to be preparing and using this uh, competition today to prepare for your competition tomorrow? Well, I'm watching all the athletes and which wave they use, and... Um, now I see that also if something happened and if I will manage it somehow, it's, I can still think about some good result. So that's good point because I don't like when it's too, too easy course. So if something happened, you are out of everything. But here also with one touch means nothing. 
or uh, one uh, little mistake. We saw it also with Jessica in, uh, in Samu that she was absolutely out of the gate and she had to go again, but it was still enough for her. Well, on course now, Marie Zellier Lafont of France, and in touch with our race leader, just 0.22 seconds down, had to work quite hard on the top section. But it, as you say, she kept calm, she kept composed, and uh, she's uh, delivering a good run at the moment. Now into the middle section in front of the grandstand here in Bratislava. Marie Zilia Lafont was an Olympian in Rio 2016, represented France, finishing 16th in the Olympic Games and, uh, well, fourth at the European Championships earlier on this year. So she has uh, had a strong performance already this year and still in touch. 1.3 seconds down. This is now time to make her move on the race leader Jessica Fox of Australia. She went really under the water. Wow, but the she... water pushed her immediately to the gate, so it was really fast. And now also the last up, it's it's quite fast. Well, how good was that? She certainly took her face full going into 21. It's going to be outside, or is it going to be outside? Is it going to challenge the race lead? Marie Zilia Lafont of France yes. into the race lead. 102.19 another clean run so we've had some outstanding paddling so far clean runs three clean runs and uh, marie zilia lafont of france takes the race lead ahead of jessica fox of australia and veronica vochova of the czech republic in third and really calm under pressure in that upstream gate 21 she probably couldn't see where she was but she knew where she committed to the line and it worked out for her A very graceful style Marie Zilia has as she comes down the course. Not really taking any unnecessary risks. Some people will duck and dive under the poles, but uh, you don't see that here. And it's worked in her favour today. So four boats down in this ten boat final. Six boats still to come. And they're the fastest six boats from this morning's semi-finals. Now, no Slovak representation in this uh, women's kayak final, but, uh, well, the Slovaks still, I think, pleased with a uh, silver medal from Matej Benos earlier on in the men's canoe final. But here we have the Olympic champion from Rio 2016, Mayelen Chorong of Spain, who, well, she dominated that Olympic final in 2016. Of course, she won a medal, bronze medal, in London 2012. So very familiar with these kind of pressure scenarios. And she looks like she's blitzed the top part of the course. Yeah, her second half, it was really, really good. And she is leading. So. Look at that. 1.36 seconds. You can't, you can't win the race on the top, but you can lose it. Yeah. At the top, you need to be really smooth and don't lose any time. And, but the bottom is the part of the course where you will have to think so a little bit sticky on the run in towards the spin on gate 12. So Mayellen needing to uh, just keep her concentration here, but it looks like she's really found the groove, found the rhythm, and is working in harmony with the white water as she comes down through gate 15 and 16. Marie Zilia Lafont, our current race leader for France, is still our virtual race leader. But Chirot is right there, just seven one hundredths of a second behind. Yeah, her team supports her so much. They are like one family, and she's a little bit lost her time. My Ellen having to work really hard in the upstream 21. It's going to be very tight. It's good on 22, but so too was Marisilia Lafont. So it's going to be a sprint finish. Oh, when a two-second no, a, a two-second penalty appeared, but it's gone away. It's going to be tight. Mylène Chahou into second place, 0.25 behind for Spain. So it is Marisilia Lafont of France still leading ahead of Mylène Chahou of Spain, with Jessica Fox of Australia in third place. So, so good on the top section for Mayella. This is where she just lost the rhythm here on the run for into 12. You can see it got a bit sticky. And uh, 
just had to fight the water quite a way all the way down. Yeah, because it's a downstream gate in the eddy, and the water push you in the wrong side, as as the athletes want it. So it's quite hard to come there and don't lose time. So some great slow mos here. She comes out of the final upstream gate. Digging deep into our reserves, ready for the uh, final to help you gate, gate 23. Uh, Maria, halfway, you're leading. How do you feel? I am happy for the moment. Uh, we will see, and uh, the course is very hard. Yeah. How is your arms and legs? Are they sore? Uh, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Or... <laughs> do you think that's fast enough to win a medal? I don't know, maybe uh, some uh, girl can uh, go more fast, we will see. Okay, keep your fingers crossed, good luck. Thank you. So Marie-Zilia Lafont there, just, uh, just giving her thoughts on whether she's done enough. And certainly we've still got some big names to come, including Karina Kuhnler of Austria, Ricarda Funk of Germany in this women's kayak final. So at a halfway point, it is Marie-Zilia Lafont of France leading the way ahead of Maëlle Chahol of Spain and Jessica Fox of Australia. That's our top three for the five fastest boats from the semi-final. Still to come down. at the moment after five boats down Zilia Lafont leading for France ahead of Maëlle Chirot of Spain I notice is still just reviewing the penalties as uh, not sure if there's anything significant there but provisionally in fact it's now come off the screen so Maëlle is confirmed as second place at the moment with Jessica Fox for Australia in third and next up, it is the Olympic silver medalist from Rio 2016, a three-time world championship finalist, and her best place fourth at the world championships in 2017 is Luca Jones of New Zealand, uh, focusing just on the kayak event this weekend. She raced in the kayak and the canoe event last weekend in London, and ooh, already in trouble on the top section. What a recovery there. Yeah, but she managed it and she loses a little bit of time. But anyway, the bottom of, of this uh, course is the most important. So 1.7 down on the early split. Well, considering the uh, shape she got out of there, she uh, has done well. No penalties picked up. Her coach Campbell Walsh will be uh, watching her every move as she comes quickly through 11 and 12. Yes, yeah, stra uh, straight next to this gate number 12, it's a uh, little rock, so um, it's quite hard to don't touch the rock and um, don't have uh, mm, and have a good speed in it. Well, we get an indication of how she stacks up compared to Marie-Zilia Lafont, our current race leader, and she's in touch, 0.18 of a second down. So Luca Jones has found some time in the middle section. Now it's about this downstream offset sequence keeping it running and in particular getting tight into 21 which she wow. does just that that is outstanding well luca jones from new zealand is on the charge it's not the best on 22 but it's tidy and now she's got a sprint to the finish and will this be enough to take the race lead i think it might well be as uh, over the rocks she goes <laughs> 100.65 and into the race lead, Luca Jones leads for New Zealand ahead of Marie-Zilia Lafont of France and Maëlle Chirot of Spain. Wow. Yeah, she can be really happy with it. And as I said, the last drop Niagara is it's the key to have a good run and to be on the podium. 
Well, and that's a great example, isn't it, of uh, the fact that it didn't all go very well at the top, she, but she composed herself, she got herself refocused and delivered the middle and the bottom section. Yeah, you can have absolutely good run, but if you don't jump last to upstream correctly, then you are absolutely out of the podium. Well, it was certainly, I wonder if we'll get a shot of it, that move into the upstream gate 21, that's surely got to be the best we've seen so far today in the women's kayak event. And that gave her the advantage that she then exploited, took it home. Luca Jones leads for New Zealand. Here we go. This is where she found some massive time. Really tight, really controlled. And Luca Jones is our race leader, ahead of Marie-Cilia Lafont of France and Mayellen Chevaux of Spain. But next up is for the United States of America, a sensation because she's just 15 years of age and she is racing in her first Senior World Cup and she's racing in her first Senior World Cup final. Yeah, she's, she's so young but uh, and she's light so her boat uh, goes really fast. So her name is Evie Leapfarf and uh, yes, she's wow. waited so long for this opportunity. Three seconds up at the early split and I know she was waiting for her 15th birthday in order to be able to compete. That, those are the rules to race internationally. You must be 15 years old. But and she now she lose a little bit of time in game number 12. And she also touched. And again, she is a little bit low. And oh. Well, looks like another penalty or oh, a 50 second penalty on the upstream gate 13. That's harsh, but uh, I guess that's our sport. It can be quite cruel. It can all be going so well, and then it all goes uh, wrong very quickly. But uh, it's great to see that uh, she is absolutely taking the charge down to the bottom of the course. Evie, a leap fast of the United States of America, has picked up another 50-second penalty on gate 17. So it's not going to happen for her, but there's so many, many, many positives that she'll take away from this weekend. Yeah. She won't be happy with this run, but I think that for her it's, uh, it's really good that she is in final, and uh, now she knows that she is fast enough. And I suspect there'll be a few of the men's kayak looking at that for tomorrow, looking at where she found three seconds on the top section. Yeah. Her top was really good because she, her pedaling is really fast. Well, it won't be today uh, for Evie Leapfarf, the, uh, the story that probably we wanted to write in the script, a medal in her first Senior World Cup final, but credit, she's 15 years of age for the United States of America, and what a performance in the semi-finals to uh, get into the final, as she showed what she's capable of. So there's a name to watch, Evie Leapfarf of the United States of America, We'll watch that name. I think we'll see more of her in the future. Yeah. I think at the junior um, events, she will be absolutely one of the uh, athletes which can have a medal in both categories because she is also pedaling both categories, K1 and C1. Uh, there we see the penalties being reviewed by the judges on the video uh, judge system as well. That ensures a fair competition here. This is the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. It's the second race of the season uh, here in Bratislava in Slovakia. And Luca Jones leads for New Zealand ahead of Marizilia Lafont of France, Mayellen Chahot of Spain. And we have three boats still to go. And next on course, it's Victoria Wolfhardt of Austri Austria, wearing bib number 11. Now, coming into this top section, this is the bit that's caused so many problems. And, uh, well, plan B for Victoria. But again, a good recovery there. Yeah, from, uh, from Austria, we have two boats in the final. So that means that their team, it's, it's not big, but it's really strong. Yeah, so still to come, Karina Kunla, the world champion from 2010 and 2011. Uh, will be up next actually but uh, Victoria Volfart has a time loss and a penalty now and time slipping away so it would look as if it is uh, fairly safe for Luca Jones at the moment 100.65 Luca Jones for New Zealand who is our race leader with uh, three boats still to go Victoria Volfart though 
is uh, still absolutely cutting the lines and racing this out hard. But you can see the deficit is quite large now. 6.08 seconds. And again, just waving her head at uh, gate 17. As she comes in towards the bottom drop here. Wow, that's a superb line. Yeah. Really dry, you keep the boat dry. That's the key on that move, isn't it? Yeah, you need to jump a um, little bit um, under the arcade, and then you have speed also for the next part. Well, Vic course. Victoria Volfart, that mistake on the top section, it's not happening for her, but a great bottom section there, yeah. and uh, into fifth place. So it is still Luca Jones leading for New Zealand. Uh, Marie-Zilia Lafont of France, Mayellen Schuchel of Spain. As here we see Victoria Volfart, uh, that's where the time loss really was on the top section. Once she came into gate 11 and onwards, then she really found some pace and uh, delivered a really solid run. So how do you control, Sona, how do you control your, um, your pace and, and making sure you've still got the physical energy on the bottom of the course to deliver a move like gate 21 and 22? Well, sometimes it's really hard because uh, when, uh, when the course is technical, like here, then you don't have really big power to, to the last uh, section. But the key is that uh, you need to have uh, really big speed and uh, your boat uh, should go forward under the gate, not turn before or um, jump uh, really high, but a little bit lower and then and then you should be safe. So it's keeping the technique going at the end as well as uh, keeping some energy in reserves. As next up, it is two-time world champion from Austria. It is Karina Kunla, now very powerful, strong paddler. And uh, if she can deliver this top section, then we'd expect a strong run from Karina. That was really nice. Well, it looks good. She certainly looks like she's found the rhythm and 4.4 .4 seconds up. Well, it did look good, but that is exceptional. So Karina Kuna now. Oh, little and touch so with many, the boat. So many people hitting that gate 10 with the boat. Yeah, because the water before the gate, it changed a lot. And if you would like to go more on the left side, then it's a big, uh, big chance that you will touch it. So you need to go really in the middle of the gate and then you can be safe. Yeah, and everyone trying to cut that line to set up the move in the middle. Let's see, Karina Kunla, she had four and a half seconds nearly the advantage. She still has an advantage, but it's being cut down. 1.94 and a bit of time there, just waiting for gate 18. But Austria are on the charge here as she comes into the upstream. Well, it's really tight there. A little bit sticky. Now she's got to deliver this final upstream gate. And uh, Karina Kunla really fighting it out. It's going to be tight. 100.65 is the time to beat. That's the time of Luca Jones. Surely that's going to be beaten by Karina Kunla of Austria. And just inside, 0.94 of a second. Karina Kunla of Austria takes the race lead. So it is Kunla leading for Austria. Luca Jones of New Zealand in second place. Marie-Zilia Lafont of France in third. And we still have one boat to go. There we go. Change of the order. The top three. This Karina was the Kunla. first time under 100 second. Also with the touch. So her run had to be really fast. That's a really good point there. So it is. And that's actually the fastest time of the day. 97.71. So, uh, well, there's only one person who could beat that, and she's very capable of doing that. And that's the uh, fastest boat from the semi-final, Germany's Ricarda Funk, who will be up next. But Karina Kunler, she uh, really kept her composure under pressure and delivers here. Of course, she won a world title, her second world title on this course. But that was back in 2011, and we haven't seen as much of her since then as we might have expected in terms of uh, championship titles. Yeah, she was many times in finals, but sometimes in final you need to have a luck. Well, here we go. The final paddler in this women's kayak ICF World Cup final. 
And it is Ricarda Funk of Germany, European champion of 2018. She was a world championship medalist in 2018. Very capable, always in the mix. Last weekend, she was the silver medalist behind Mallory Franklin of Great Britain, who's not racing this weekend. And, well, it looks like an early penalty picked up there for Funk of Germany. 3.46 seconds down. But I would say don't panic at this stage. Yeah, it might be still enough to get a medal if she won't do any big mistakes. So 102.19 is the time it will take to beat to get a medal. And 99.71 to take the gold. Ricarda Funk of Germany now looking smooth in the middle section and she's always deceptively quick. Yeah, but big surprise is that Chess is already out of the podium after I think many races and after her last season which was incredible. Well, look at that, Ricarda Funk of Germany, supreme through the middle section, through this downstream sequence, and she's really closed the deficit down, but she's oh. gone in too high on 21, and, uh, well, it's all over for the gold medal. Can she still come back for a medal? I suspect the time has gone, but we'll have to wait and see. So it looks like Karina Kuhnler of Austria is going to take the gold here. Ricarda Funk, what a recovery. She may still take a medal as she comes into the finish, and she does. Wow. What an outstanding <laughs> performance. But Karina Kuhnler of Austria takes the gold medal here. Luca Jones takes silver for New Zealand, and Ricarda Funk, well, what a performance. She goes in too tight on 21, has to go round for it, but she still comes away with a medal. Yeah, but uh, her time was around 100 seconds, 100.05. So anyway, with that big mistake, she was around 100 seconds. So that's also incredible. Well, incredible performance there, but it is Karina Kuhnler of Austria who takes gold in this, the second World Cup of the season. And uh, Luca Jones, New Zealand, takes the silver medal. Uh, Ricarda Funk, here we see it. Too tight on the upstream 21. But how quick was her thinking to whip round ahead Karina, of back on the top bronze. of the podium. A gold medal. What a strong performance from you today. Yeah, I, uh, I was struggling in the last two races at Europeans and the first World Cup. I didn't make the final and I uh, missed out last week. Uh, by just uh, 0 0.01, so I was eager to push really hard today. So important for you, for your confidence, to, to remind yourself of what you can do? Yeah, I think so. I think this is uh, really good for my self-confidence and uh, going forward to um, the rest of the season with Olympic selections, I think this uh, is going to give myself a bit of a push. Just how tough was that course today? It was really tough, uh, walking the course and looking at the guys doing it in C1. Um, I was a bit worried in some places, but you know you just have to push and uh, keep the boat running. Congratulations. Enjoy the moment. See you again soon. Thank you. Thanks. Well, congratulations to Karina Kunla taking gold here in Bratislava. And yes, Luca Jones of New Zealand getting a great performance for Silver. Ricardo Funk, what a recovery, getting uh, bronze and uh, adding that uh, bronze to the silver medal she won last weekend. Well, your reflections on that final? Well, it was so interesting because many big names made such a big mistake, such a jazz, uh, Fox and Maya Lynn should add. So, uh, so for me, it's, it's quite a big surprise to have, for example, maybe Luca Jones, but her run was incredible. And also Ricarda with such a big mistake still on the podium. Well, I'd agree. And I think for me, one of the big reflections is just the quality of the field we've got. It's a big course here, really technically demanding course. And actually the top six paddlers are wor all within 3.2 seconds of the race lead, just how tight it was. And of course, tomorrow we'll be racing again. Tomorrow we have the uh, women's canoe, which you'll be competing in, Sona, so you'll be uh, getting ready for that. Semi-finals and finals, and the men's K1 semi-finals and finals. So all the action gets underway, nine o'clock, 
Central European time on that Sunday morning with the semi-finals of the women's C1 for the women's kayak. Well, this final, it really came alive from the start. Jessica Fox set the pace that we knew, left the door open. And then as we went through, we saw some outstanding paddling, but uh, some great reactive paddling, particularly from Ricardo Funk, snatching the bronze from uh, what was a disaster on gate 21. So from here, in Bratislava in Slovakia, here are the standings. Ricardo Funk takes the early lead in the overall standings ahead of Jessica Fox. Karina Kunla, the gold medalist of today, moves into third place ahead of the Olympic champion Milan Shiro of Spain. Five races in the series and double points in the final in Prague in early September. But uh, from here in Bratislava in Slovakia, then the Karina Kunla takes gold for Austria and we'll be back with the action of the semi-finals in the women's C1 and the men's K1 tomorrow morning. That gets underway at 9 o'clock Central European time and again finals later on, I think midday Central European time. But uh, all the action here. So from myself, Andy Maddock, and a big thank you to Sona Stanowska of the Slovak team for your insider knowledge on this fantastic course in Bratislava. That's it for today. We'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you.